Hi, I'm Old Radio Guy. Welcome to the seventh in my series of videos directed to English-speaking photographers seeking a cheaper photo editor to use with Lightroom. I'm recommending you try Photoline, a powerful photo editor published in Germany, available in both 32-bit and 64-bit, and available on both Windows and Mac platforms. This video will give you a quick overview of Photoline layers. I'm using Photoline 1753 64-bit. I have a widescreen monitor giving me a few more customization options. Thus I have my toolbox docked next to the panels on the right and I use simple browse docked on the left side of the workspace for easy access to my working directory. First I suggest you have these panels on the right turned on. Tool Settings, Layers Channels, and the Undo List. And in case you've forgotten, select the panels from View Panels and the list of options there. Let's tour the Layers Channels panel. At the top are two tab options, Layers and Channels. We'll not be using Channels in this video, so make certain you have the Layers tab selected. Just below the Layers tab is a drop-down with 28 blend options, setting the way the layer is blended with the layer immediately beneath. Blends will be covered in greater detail in another video. To the right of that is an Opacity window for setting the opacity of the selected layer. Click in the window and use the mouse wheel to change the opacity in percentage increments of 10. Click on the up and down arrow buttons to change the settings in increments of 1. Note in photo line you can use percentages higher than 100% to increase the intensity of a layer. The next level down is the location of the lock buttons for the selected layer. Lock the transparency. Lock position to prevent accidental movement of the layer and lock selection to prevent selection of the current layer. As of the production date, there is a slight discrepancy between what you see on the screen here and the illustration in the PL help file. The help file shows checkboxes. Instead, the icons themselves now serve as the checkboxes. When selected, a small icon appears in the layer line also. Below is the portion of the Layers panel that actually shows layers. In each layer, the first box is an eye. Clicking on the eye causes the eye icon to disappear and the layer is no longer visible. Adjacent to the eye box is a box that is either empty or with a check mark. By default, the layer selected with the left mouse button has a check mark in it. If an action is to be taken on two layers, a second layer can be selected by simply clicking the left mouse button in the empty box. To the right is a tiny representation of the contents of the image with an adjacent layer name and layer type. The layer name can be changed by clicking on a layer to make it active and then clicking on the current name. A box opens and you simply type in the new name. Right-clicking on a layer opens an option window containing numerous choices, some of which are duplicates of the icons below. The first of these icons is a switch to create a new layer. It opens a window for making choices including the layer type, name, and size. The next icon duplicates the current layer. You should get in the habit of duplicating the background layer and working in the background copy each time you come into Photoline from Lightroom. The third button layer is the delete layer. If you ever click on this button by mistake, just drop down to the undo list and click on the action above to restore that layer. Next to the delete layer is an information button revealing the settings for the selected layer. On the right side of this level are four other button icons. The first adds a layer mask. More on that in a moment. The adjacent icon with the tiny red arrow is for adding adjustment layers. I'll deal with the powerful non-destructive adjustment layer option in another video. The S icon is for selecting a style option for a layer. 
A typical use here would be to add a drop shadow to a text layer. Finally, the gear icon represents various options for changing layer properties, most of which are represented in other layer tools. Now that we've toured the layers panel, how would it be used out of Lightroom? Well, typical use would be repair of a surface flaw. In this example here, I've made a copy of the background layer, then created a new transparent layer on top. My objective was to repair the imperfection in the propeller. I used the copy brush. With focus on the transparent layer, I selected Merge Copy in the Tool Settings option. This allowed me to choose the correction point from the image below, but paint in the transparent area. Using Alt plus left click, I selected the areas to provide the replacement and then painted over the chipped area. I changed the brush size by holding down Control left button and moving the mouse. The painting went on in the transparent area. The original layer was preserved. In this quick and dirty example, the intensity in the tool setting was 100%. However, better blending could have been achieved by backing down a bit and using an additional pass of the brush. You'll also use masking a lot. Just select Create Mask to attach a mask to the layer. If you've been using Photoshop, note in Photo Line the mask is not on the same level as the layer. Press the B key to activate the brush tool. Change the brush intensity and tool settings if necessary. Make certain the foreground colors are set for black and white by clicking the tiny black-white icon and select the brush tip from the drop-down, usually a common soft or hard edge. If necessary, hold down the Control key and drag to change the size of the brush. Remember, white keeps, black removes. If you need to reverse foreground background colors, click the double arrow area here. By default, white is the color of the new layer. If you want to begin with black, use the Fill tool to fill with black and then paint on white, or use the keyboard shortcut of Alt-I. I don't find this shortcut indexed or documented in the English language help file. Now here's an example of another kind of mask that you could use. This is a clipping mask made with a raster layer and a text layer. This word ceiling started out as a text layer and it's combined in a clipping mask with, a ra with the raster layer. A style has been applied using the S button over here and you see the small S there on the layer indicating that the style has been applied. And you, if you look you can see the drop shadow. Here's an example where you might want to use the lock. After you position this layer you press the lock. That layer cannot be moved until it is unlocked. Now how is this clipping mask created? Well here's another text layer. The text layer is on top. Immediately beneath that is a raster layer showing a ceiling. Now we're going to select the text layer, make sure it's the activated layer there, and we go to the mask button and select in this case Convert for previous. And now what we've done is create a clipping mask. We select the clipping mask layer. If we want to add the style, we go to the style layer button and select the shadow outside in this case. OK. And now we can move it around and lock it in place. When it's time to go back into Lightroom, you'll need to flatten all the layers, then save. To flatten, go to the Layer menu and choose either Reduce to Background Layer or Reduce to One Layer. And all those layers now have been flattened to one background. Now you click Control S to save as the TIFF in, back into Lightroom. If you want to also save your actions in the native photo line document PLD, go down to your undo list and choose the action just before you reduce the background. And now you can do a 
save as and save in the PLD format. Now your dilemma. Where to put the PLD file? Lightroom won't recognize it. However, if you store the file in the same directory as the TIFF, you can open Photo Line. Select Open from the File menu. And set the type of file to PLD. You navigate to the directory where the TIFF is located and it will show only the PLD files there. So that makes it easy to find the PLD file. Don't expect Lightroom to ever recognize PLD files. Well, that's my brief overview of the photo line layers panel. I'll produce a couple of other videos dealing with layers later, but I hope I have provided enough hints here to assist you in exploring more of this part of the application on your own. Remember, don't be driven away by the old-style look of the PhotoLine interface. Despite its many idiosyncrasies, PhotoLine is a powerful photo editor. I'm Old Radio Guy. Thanks for watching.